Uh, so in this video, I want to expand on something that I worked on in the last video, which was uh, trying to find this particular solution. And we use this when we have a non-homogeneous second order differential equation, like I have here, um, with the idea being that our general solution is going to be um, this homogeneous uh, complement plus the particular solution, yp. And um, the example that I used in the last video was this uh, y double prime minus y prime minus 2y is equal to 8e to the 3t. Um, we found uh, if we temporarily set this to be homogeneous, um, where we set this equal to 0, then uh, this is our complementary solution. Our particular solution, um, we look at the form that g of t has, so g of t is 8e to the 3t, and so what we decided, excuse me, is that um, the particular solution is going to be a times e to the 3t, so some constant times e to the 3t. Um, we plug that into the differential equation, we found that a is equal to 2, and then the last step was to just add those two yc and yp together to get this. Um, I want to look at a, oops, I want to look at a, a similar problem. Uh, so the left-hand side of this equation is going to be exactly the same, uh, but this time I'm going to set it equal to 4t squared. So you can kind of see um, what you need to think about when you're picking the form of this. So it's not just an exact copy all the time of g of t. Uh, there's a couple things we have to think about. Uh, so in this example, um, like I said, the left-hand side of the equation is the same. So yc is uh, the same as it is above. Okay, And that's going to be true for all the examples that I show uh, today. They're all going to have the same, um, they're all going to have the same uh, left-hand side of the equation. So the complementary solution is always going to be the same. Um, moving on to yp, um, uh, we might guess ha uh, we might guess that the um, uh, form of this based on this might be something like a t squared. Uh, so when we uh, set that up, um, we'll say this is a, is a first guess. Um, that means that our uh, yp prime is going to be 2at, and our yp double prime is going to be equal to 2a. Plugging this into the, why that keeps happening, uh, plugging that into our differential equation that we have up top here, we end up with, um, <clears throat> uh, let's see, 2a minus 2at uh, minus 2at squared is equal to 4t squared. Um, you can definitely um, take out a 2a on here, but what I want you to notice um, right now is that um, on the left-hand side, and this is a good um, technique to keep in mind, um, you know, throughout this process. Um, we have t squared terms, we have t terms, and then we have constant terms. Um, here we can see uh, we have a t squared term, but we sort of have a, a t term where this coefficient out in front is zero, and then our constant is going to be zero here. All right. Um, the reason I'm doing this is I can match um, a based on this. I can say that a um, for this t squared term, if I want my t squared terms to match, then negative 2 times a has to equal 4, right? Because this uh, negative uh, 2 times a has to match up with this 4 because they're both in front of the uh, t squared term. So we might decide from this that a is equal to uh, negative 2, since that's the only value that will fit in here. 
Um, but if we look out in front of the t terms, we have negative 2 times a has to equal 0. So we're also sort of concluding that a is equal to 0. Same thing with the constant terms. Uh, we're concluding that a is equal to 0. And um, this is not good, right? We have two values for some variable. Um, and it can't be both, right? It has to be one of these. Um, it has to be one of these two. And um, so um, something went wrong. And uh, what went wrong is we picked the wrong form for our particular solution. So y of p um, is not going to be equal to um, a times t squared. All right, this form is not going to be enough. Uh, what we want for our particular solution is something that's flexible that can kind of account for um, the first derivative and second derivative. Um, in this case, that means the t term and the constant term. Uh, so we want something that's um, uh, going to be flexible enough to account for that. So we'll say uh, the particular solution a t squared is uh, not sufficient. Uh, we need our particular solution to be flexible, so uh, we'll have an at squared term, but we want to include every t term all the way down to being a constant. Um, so this polynomial, right, um, that's going to be flexible enough to actually um, uh, account for y prime and y double prime here. So um, if we uh, start using this one, we can see that uh, yp prime is equal to 2at plus b. yp double prime is going to be equal to uh, just 2a. So plugging this in, um, y double prime, so that's going to be 2a. Um, minus yp prime, so minus 2a t plus b uh, times, oh, that's our uh, y prime, sorry, and then minus uh, 2 times uh, y, which is going to be 2 times a t squared plus b t plus c. And all that is equal to 4t squared. Okay. So if we try that same technique um, where we think about all the t squared terms, the t terms, and the constant terms on the left hand side, and we try to set them equal to 4 and 0 and 0, which are t squared, t, and constant terms on the right hand side. Um, it, then we should be able to solve for values a, b, and c since we have three equations here. So um, um, if I can gather up all my t squared terms, uh, it looks like I only have one here. So this is going to be negative 2a times t squared plus um, and then all my t terms are going to be, let's see, I have negative 2at. And then this one is minus 2b. T. Uh, so that's all my t terms. And then my constant terms, I've got three of them. 2a. Um, minus b from up here, and then minus 2c. So that's all equal to 4t squared. Um, I'm going to write this just slightly differently. Um, and I'll only do this for this example just to Make sure that it's clear 
um, what I'm trying to match up. So um, in this form, um, I've got negative 2a times t squared plus some other constant times t plus some constant by itself with no t term. Um, the three equations that I'm going to use to solve for a, b, and c, this first one, I have negative 2a is out in front of the t squared. So this first one's telling me that negative 2a has to be equal to 4. Uh, the next equation that I'm looking at, this term out in front of the t, negative 2a times negative 2b has to be equal to 0. And then this last term also has to be equal to zero because that zero um, uh, is my constant term so I get 2a minus b minus 2c is equal to zero and that's three equations three unknowns a b and c so I can just start solving for them uh, this first one tells me that a is equal to uh, negative 2 uh, so that matches up with what we saw the first time, but um, we can uh, plug that in. So we get 4 minus 2b is equal to 0. Uh, so that means that uh, negative 2b is equal to negative 4. So we get that b is equal to 2. Uh, this one, if we plug that in, we get, let's see, negative 4 minus 2 minus 2c is equal to 0. Uh, so this one, let's see, 6 is equal to negative 2c. So we get that c is equal to uh, negative 3. Okay, um, those are our three undetermined coefficients. We figured them out. So our particular solution is going to be uh, negative 2t squared from this, uh, plus 2t minus 3. And that means our general solution is going to be um, that particular, or sorry, this complementary solution okay. uh, so in summary uh, we figured out our general solution um, our complementary solution was the same as um, last time but uh, the big idea from this one is that um, even though our g of t, uh, so even though our g of t for this one was equal to 4t squared, um, just writing a t squared is not enough. So anytime you have um, a polynomial like this, uh, where it's uh, t to some power, you need to include in your form of your particular solution all of the lower powers as well. So you can't just include this higher power. Um, you have to use uh, this form here. Right. So I'll just kind of mark All right, let me see if this one's not going to work, but this one this one's our correct form. Let's look at a second example. Uh, so the second example is going to be uh, 
like I said, the same left hand side, y double prime minus uh, y prime. minus 2y is equal to, and then this time I'm going to call this negative 20 times sine of t. Okay, um, for this one, um, yc is the same. Um, for YP, uh, you might want to think about what the form of this would be if you had a first guess. Um, if we use um, this form, uh, particular solution is A times sine of T, since we have some constant times sine of T. Um, this one is also uh, not sufficient. Um, so if I were to go through the example of uh, plugging in y double prime and or y prime and y double prime, um, I'm not going to be able to uh, figure out a consistent answer for this. Um, so um, um, I'll just kind of state this as fact. Um, anytime you have a sine term or a cosine term, um, you need to include both them. So I'll say that again, even if you don't have um, both a sine and a cosine in your g of t, if you have either of them, um, you need to include both of them in your particular solution. Um, this just lets you be a little bit more flexible. It might turn out that um, a or b is equal to zero and you don't need them, but um, you want to have that flexibility to uh, be able to include both. So um, if that's the case, um, then we can go ahead and solve uh, for this. Uh, so let's see, derivative there is going to be a cosine of t minus b times sine of t. And then y double prime is going to be equal to <clears throat> uh, negative a times sine of t um, minus b times cosine of t. So let's go ahead and plug those in. Um, it, negative a sine of t this b cosine of t that's our y double prime minus y prime and then I've got minus uh, two times <clears throat> Uh, minus 2 times uh, this piece here. And all of that is going to be equal to um, our g of t, which is negative 20 times sine of t. Okay. Um, this technique um, that we used in the last time is going to be relevant here as well. So um, instead of collecting around t squared terms and t terms and constant terms, uh, what we're going to be doing here is collecting around sine and cosine terms. Uh, so I'm going to I kind of collect all my uh, cosine, or 
I guess all my sign terms first, and then all my uh, cosine terms, and then that's going to be equal to negative 20. I guess these are sine of t, right, and cosine of t. So all of this is going to be equal to negative uh, 20 sine of t, and then plus uh, 0 is going to be our cosine of t term. So there's no cosine up top. Okay, uh, so let's just run through uh, what all the sine terms are going to be. Uh, so we've got negative a from this one, negative negative b from this one, so plus b, and then minus uh, 2a for that one. Um, for our cosine terms, we're going to have um, negative b and a negative a, and then a uh, minus 2 times b. So let me just double check there. I have a negative b for my cosine, negative a for my cosine, and negative 2b for my cosine. Here for my sine, I've got negative a, um, positive b, and negative uh, 2 times a. Okay, that looks good. Um, so I can come up with two equations for this. Um, I can write out that, um, for example, um, this system of equations where I say that uh, negative 3a, so b minus 3a, this piece here, um, is equal to negative 20. And I can also say that um, negative a minus 3b is equal to 0, since that's my cosine coefficient out in front here. Um, this is a fine way to look at it. Um, I don't think that there's anything wrong with this. Um, but I want to point out that there's another um, trick you can use to solve for a and b once you get to this step. And that trick is to plug in some values of t. So the idea is um, that you have these equations, right? You have the solution set up now. And this should work for any value of t, right? As long as it's a valid um, uh, value of t that's in the domain of that function, you should be able to plug in anything like, um, in this case, it would be good to plug in t equals 0. Uh, since that would get rid of this sign term completely. Uh, so if you did plug in t equals 0, um, you would end up, um, let's see, this would turn to 0, and then you would get that this is equal to 0 times 1. So you end up with the same equation here. Uh, same thing if you plug in t equals pi over 2, you're going to end up with this equation over here. But it's just something good to keep in mind. You can always plug in uh, some value of t, and that's going to give you at least one of these equations here. Um, anyway, I'm going to solve it um, just with these equations that I have here. So um, I'm going to make a substitution here and say that um, um, b is equal to, let's see, um, a divided by negative 3. Yep, a divided by negative 3. Okay. Uh, so when I plug that in over here, um, I end up with negative um, 1 third a minus 3a is equal to negative 20. This is uh, negative 9 or uh, negative 9 thirds 
Uh, so negative 10 thirds A is equal to negative 20. Uh, so that means that um, A is equal to um, 60 divided by 10, which is equal to 6. So we can just say A is equal to 6 there. Um, plugging that into this, um, we get that B is equal to negative 1 third times 6. So B is equal to negative 2. Uh, so it turns out in this one we did need both uh, the A in front of the sine and B in front of the uh, cosine terms. I think that's the order that I put them in. Yeah, A in front of the sine term and B in front of the cosine term. Uh, so uh, from this one we can conclude that... Sorry about that. We can conclude um, that our particular solution is going to be equal to uh, 6 times sine of t minus 2 times cosine of t. And so our general solution is just going to be um, c1 e to the 2t plus c2 e to the negative t. Um, plus 6 sine of t minus 2 cosine of t. Uh, big takeaway from this one, if you have um, our g of t, remember was negative uh, 20 times sine of t, um, but we need to include in our particular solution, we need to include both a sine term and a cosine term. So anytime you have either sine or cosine, Make sure that you include both in there. Okay. Uh, so one more example, um, and it's kind of a different technique. Um, so um, we'll see. Um, this is one that you should always be checking. Um, but I'm going to start off. Um, with this. So um, for this one, we've got 100 e to the negative t for our particular solution. Um, but I'll start off and say y of c is equal to, and I'll actually write it out this time, uh, c1 e to the 2t plus c2 e to the negative t. And for my particular solution, um, the last time we ran into some exponential to a power, um, we just uh, replaced that constant with a. And that worked the last time, but there's an issue here. Um, if you think about if you were to use this, uh, so this is incorrect, but if you were to use this, your general solution would be c1 e to the 2t plus c2 e to the negative t plus some constant that you could solve for times e to the negative t. Um, the issue here is that we've already got an e to the negative t term in here, right? So we kind of want uh, this and this and this to all be independent of each other. Um, we don't want any repeats in here. Um, so uh, we'll say this term here is uh, not sufficient. Okay, so this is not sufficient. Um, the reason being we can't have um, these repeats. And we actually saw a similar problem in, when we looked at 
um, the homogeneous case where we had repeated roots. Um, if you had the same e to the lambda t, um, it wasn't, um, it didn't work out to have the same e to the lambda t in two terms. And so the fix that we had Uh, so I'll say this is the same fix as um, repeated roots. In uh, section 3.4 was when we dealt with that. Um, it's the same fix. I guess I'll put it in uh, this order. So we'll say A. Uh, times t, e to the negative t. Um, this will work. All right, this is totally fine. Um, <clears throat> so um, I'm going to uh, go ahead and um, leave this one, um, figuring out why p prime and y pre uh, double prime. I'm going to leave this as an exercise for you. Um, it's got a lot of product rules in here for you to deal with, um, but uh, you should be able to solve for a at the end of it. Um, what I want you to keep in mind when you're working through this example is that um, you can always set t equal to 0, pi over 2, whatever is convenient for you. You can always set t equal to some value. Um, and that will make finding a um, significantly easier. But go ahead and figure out what y p prime are, y p prime and y p double prime are. Um, plug them into your differential equation. See if you can solve for a. Um, while I have this up, I think I've got enough time. Yeah, I've got enough time to go over um, one more idea. So you might. Um, figure this out intuitively, uh, but I just want you to think about um, a really, really similar problem. Uh, but this one we've got um, a repeated root over on the side here. So um, the repeated root, um, if you solve for Uh, so this is different from the one we've been working with. If you assume y is equal to e to the lambda t, you get uh, lambda squared minus 2 lambda plus 1 is equal to 0 for the homogeneous case. So let's say I'm finding right yc. Um, when I find this homogeneous case, I end up with uh, lambda minus 1 times lambda minus 1. Oh, uh, sorry. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to fix this for uh, 100 times e to the t. Right. Uh, so um, in this case, we get that uh, y1 is equal to uh, e to the uh, t y2 using that um, repeat uh, repeated root technique. Uh, this is going to be t times e to the t. Uh, so when it comes time to find that um, uh, particular solution, right? Um, we can't use a e to the t. That's not going to work because we already have an e to the t term. But we also uh, can't use t e to the t in here. So what we actually need to do is just we continue multiplying this by t um, anytime we have a repeat. So this is going to just look like t squared e to the t. That's the one that's going to work, right? So 
this is the correct form, um, and then you can work with this one to solve for A on there. Um, these other two forms are going to give you, uh, if you try to solve for A, you'll end up with something like negative 4 is equal to 0 or something like that, so uh, we can't have that. Um, anyway, that's um, all for this video on um, figuring out the form of the particular solution. Um, I'm going to have a short video that follows this where I go over um, where I go over uh, solving for uh, something like this. Right, so if we have this um, sort of giant compound um, g of t, um, then we can figure out the form of this particular solution. Um, I think it's a little bit too cruel to make you um, solve for a, b, and c, and d, and e, and f um, in this case, but you will be expected to know at least what the form of that particular solution is going to take. Um, so um, there's a page in your book, there's a table. Um, in section 3.8 that tells you exactly what to do, but um, I'm going to try and make that a little bit more understandable because sometimes that table can be hard to read. But that's all for this one, so we'll see you in the next video.